welcome back to my channel today is Sunday and we just got back from church and I just thought I would pick up the camera to kind of you know bring you guys along with me on how I move uh, how I basically prepare for the new week and I'm also moving into a new um, unit study we are saying goodbye to the body unit bye bye it's been here for far too long we had fun and I am doing a recap of how our body unit went um, so hopefully I'll have that done soon and up on the channel but we are moving over into our bug unit so I figured I would just pick up the camera and just kind of take you along on my very raw process of how I move us into a new unit and prepare for the new week um, I think this is great accountability for me too so yeah that's what we're doing. So the first thing that I did was start taking down, you know, all of the stuff from our last unit. So I had all of my x-rays up here. I took those down. I'm getting ready to clear off my board so I can prepare to have a fresh new board. I used to prepare the boards um, and kind of have it be a surprise for them in the mornings when they wake up. But I learned that wasn't as efficient as just laying all the resources out and doing it together. So, um, you guys probably already know that my oldest really helps with the chalkboard and just the creative process in our homeschool. So, it works out really well that way. Instead of always feeling like I needed to have something prepared to surprise them, they feel like they're a part of it and they have more of an active role in deciding, you know, what we're going to study. Because even though I say bugs, there's so many things in the whole bug arena that we can kind of cover. And so they have more of an active voice in what we are going to study. I, now I'm getting chit chatty, so let me just move along. So <laughs> I move this stuff out of the way. I'm going to go through their work boxes. I'm going to gather together all the resources that I have that could add to our bug unit. I'm going to get out my little planning sheets just to kind of jot down what um, some of our ideas are. And I normally do this myself, this whole Sunday night thing at the end of the night. But I'm trying to do it, like I said, at the beginning um, of the day after we got back from church, of course. And I may even pull Cameron in now so that he can start helping me gather up some ideas. So the first thing I can think of is I move all around my room to just kind of pull out what I already have. Because so many times we have resources already and we just forget about them. I'm basically gonna go through all of my own stuff to just kind of pull out what I can use. This is my animal book by Steve Jenkins. I'm thinking that this one is probably not gonna help me much in my bug unit. However, I spot this little ladybug right here. And so I'm just gonna take it down and see if I might be able to use it. So I just go through them because too often we gather resources and then forget to use them a lot of times. And then there's just like a never ending list of resources that we just want to keep getting and keep getting when we haven't fully used what we already have. And when I say we, I mean me. So, oh look, see? So we've got an ant here and I've got a butterfly here. And we've got a grasshopper here, a winged grasshopper. I had no idea that grasshoppers had wings. <laughs> um, yeah, so this looks like I'm definitely gonna be able to use this Japanese, Japanese honeybee little stack of resources. Here I have my beetle book that I got in the discarded section of the library for like 25 cents. Definitely going to be using that. So I'll just pull this out. I'm going to take this off and we're going to change it. So actually this book is Discovery Kids Animals. I'm sorry, Brian's over there washing dishes. So, <laughs> so I've got some noise in the background. But um, I don't think, I think this is all... You know, just, I don't think that there are many insects inside of here. So this is probably not one of the ones that we're going to be using. Okay, then I go into my curriculum um, drawer. And I think that I'm going to finally be able to start a unit study. Um, to get some help from this Good and the Beautiful unit study. Oh no, there we go. Yeah, so I think I'm finally going to be able to start one of the Good and the Beautiful studies because 
this fits the bill. So we've got arthropods, insects, spiders, and crustaceans. The reason why I haven't used any of the units that I've received so far is because when I first got my curriculum packet, we were finishing up the uh, solar system. So I wasn't really able to use that one because we had just finished the solar system unit. And then we moved on to the body unit. And at the time that I received, my curriculum packet the body unit had not yet been released so i had to just go ahead and move forward with my regular body unit things so now that we're ending this up and we're moving on to the bug unit i get to finally try it out i'm not going to um i'm not i'm not sure which parts of the unit i'm actually going to be using you guys know that i basically use the curriculum as another resource so I don't do everything that's laid out in the curriculum bit by bit. And I've, it's been a little tricky trying to figure out how I'm going to tell you um, how I've been incorporating things, but I'm hoping that I do a decent job at showing you how I'm using it. Like I said, over and over again, for me, the Good and the Beautiful curriculum has been amazing for that basic, you know, peace of mind. Um, on top of building my own curriculum and then also for the scripts okay because I've told you this before when I'm having a rough time um, just having that script that I can read out or let them just go ahead and read on their own has been like amazing so that's what works for me anyway like I said we're just going to we're gonna be able to get right into this so so far I've got that beetle book this animal book, my um, my packet for the Good and the Beautiful Arthropods, and now I am grabbing my um, my iPad because I am going to go through this as well and pick out the different apps that can help us. Another thing that I'm going to grab, you guys, out in the studio space is this right here. So this nature anatomy book should have some bees and the ants and the things. So I'm going to grab that. So we've got that. I mean, in a bowl, some bugs hop, some bugs glide, some bugs swim, some bugs quick. Some bugs build, some oh bugs make. This is the last one. Look at this page. The end. She learned. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just going to open up my laptop. I am going to peek at my Evernote and take a look at some of the things I had already collected for the bug unit. Then I am probably going to take a look at our iPad and see um, if there's anything I can pull from apps that we already have or any new apps that I might want to add to start off the bug unit and just make sure that they are on the front page of their iPad like the front yeah I guess it would be considered a page <laughs> but the front part let me is that better yeah um the front page of their um, iPads I'll put them there so that they can kind of visually see that they have priority what else what else what else was I gonna say so oh then I will take a look at YouTube and see if I can gather a set of um, bug type uh, videos that I can kind of put together all together in a playlist that's really helpful because when they want to watch television I just go ahead and put that playlist on um, I'll play that playlist using the airplay which basically allows me to play it straight from my iPad to our TV and so because uh, a lot of times I'll get stuck if I just need a moment to myself or I'm trying to get something else accomplished and they will ask to watch television and I let them go ahead and watch television which is not a big deal for us. Um, normally they are approved programs. Normally they're approved programs that I let them watch and I just always use the subtitles. You guys know that's one of my biggest tips um, in homeschool is using the subtitles. Um, because they just enjoy reading the subtitles. They're always paying attention to them. It helps them with their spelling. It's just overall a good thing. 
but lately when I need that type of time, especially when I'm trying to get things done for business, I notice that I've been feeling quite guilty letting them play their favorite shows over and over again. So, and most of the time I can't gather myself together enough to go ahead and put on the programs that I want to so I thought that if I just set up a playlist in the very beginning then I would always have something to just kind of go to then after that I will also do like a similar thing for our Netflix account that way I have all of my things kind of set up and ready to move into the bug direction so um, what did I say again I'm gonna check my Evernote and take a look at the resources that I kind of pulled together in the beginning when I started kind of pre-planning our unit and then I'm going to check their iPads and make sure I put on the front page any apps that'll be helpful along the way and things that we want to focus on just make sure I have those on the front page and then I'm going to check out a YouTube playlist and then uh, collect some things together on their Netflix account and that is where I'm going to end it. I'm trying not to make it too complicated. This is just the beginning of the unit and along the way we are just going to add to it. So in the very beginning, just as a little backstory, I used to kind of fully pull together all of my units in the very beginning and I found that it was kind of a waste of time because sometimes our unit study didn't always go in the direction that I um, laid out so and then also I just wanted the kids to be more interactive I wanted them to take ownership over how they were studying the information so I found that it was a lot less stressful for me to have them involved and it was a lot more fun um, for them to have them involved so and it's just easier for me to jump it's just it's just a more stress-free way of planning and I can get it done quickly and be happy about it and move on with life and then we can add to it along the way as our studies progress so that is what I'm about to do that's what I'm about to do and I must say that I'm really proud of myself because I was I was getting quite tired and needing a Sunday nap for sure but I decided to just kind of jump up and get back to it um i got a little bit thrown off because brian's parents came over for a quick visit and that threw me off a little bit but it was a nice welcome to visit and now i am back to it so i'm just going to get it done i'm giving myself it is 4 45 so i'm going to give myself what i'd say like 20 oh, minutes to kind of get it together i have my little stack here so this is my stack of things that i'm going to start with i pretty much already told you but i'll just go through it again it's nature anatomy book an ipad right here my arthropod set from the good and the beautiful my beetle book my animal book i've got my computer that's got all things youtube netflix evernote right here and what else did I want to try and gather? Oh, you guys, you guys know that we love our build kits. We wish there were more of them. We wish they were a little bit better made, but we still love them nonetheless. So I'm pretty sure I have, and this is not one I've been looking forward to, but they'll love it. So I've got build the scorpion, which this will work, right? Because this is, yeah. Will that fall in line, guys? I think so. Okay, so <laughs> there was one more thing I was thinking of. One more thing, what was it? I was kind of putting the feelers out there for the kids that we were moving on into the body unit. One thing I really like to do too is kind of talk to them a couple of weeks before we start to move into it and kind of get their ideas and kind of, you know, kind of give them a choice but not really <laughs> like let them know that it's coming up and kind of make them think it was their idea but anyway um we had a little conversation about the last time we studied bees a little bit and i love having those little conversations because they're always like oh yeah i remember we did that so i was talking about when we did bees so this was the last time we started to study bees a little bit cameron did this and then Kendall did this one. And I love these so much because I think I may have shown them to you before. I love these so much. These little hectagon pieces. He took those out and traced them and used them 
to do this which was amazing because he is my like my not typical artist he was not the one that started out artistic um, but I thought this was amazing so he created this little honeycomb with the bees in it I really like the progressive unit studies because it really is just taking what you learned the little bit that you learned before and building on it and then the next time you go and revisit it again you build on it again so the kids I've really been enjoying that along my journey because you guys like they're getting older and I remember thinking to myself like what was it going to be like as they get older and as we move into new information and I think a, a one thing you a, one thing I would always think of in my mind is um, how much information is it that you want them to know um, and how well do you want them to know it this is nice because at this point in my journey, I, I have a better understanding of how it actually works. Um, and because we're not like teachers, well, I, I wasn't a teacher. Maybe that's something that um, regular school teachers kind of already have a grasp of. I don't know. I guess homeschooling is just completely different because you're with the child from when they're young and you grow with them as opposed to teaching just a class of third graders or a class of um, preschoolers like you're more well versed in that particular grade in this case you really just have to be open to the journey and to moving along with them you know what i mean you want headphones here there you go another thing i'm going to do is replace the books that I have on the easels. This one is for our geography, which I don't have to have it here. So I'm just going to close this one up. Move it over here. I think there's actually bugs in this Mommy. other book. And Amelia? Daddy. Yes, honey. Daddy's doesn't have a hole in it. And he has to go. So, definitely Hello. have one. Brian sweatpants. That has a hole. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Guess I'll be doing that part later. <laughs> okay, so I just realized that my Animalian book has some bugs and bees and stuff in it, so I'm just going to use this one as well. When you first get these books, I feel like you're super excited to get them. You get them, they're beautiful, you unbox them, all that jazz, and then you're like, what am I supposed to do with this? The kids look at them for all of, you know, however long. They go back to them from time to time, but you're not really diving in, diving in. And I had to remind myself that it's just, you know, it's a collection of resources and we use them as we go along. So. This is another example of being able to crack it open and let it add to whatever unit we're studying. So right now, I am just going to look through these. And normally I take a small post-it and just go ahead and put a post-it in a space where there's something we would be able to add to our unit. There's not going to be a whole bunch in here, but look at this. Flying insects. Look at that flying insects so this is going to be a page that I bookmarked I was just going to open up my maps book in geography we've been really covering all 50 states and so I just keep it out there for them to see you know in passing and that's a really good way I feel like um, for them to remind themselves I don't know it gives them I feel like when things are laid out this way on easels and up on the walls and things it just gives them a stronger sense of um of discovery and exploration so to speak so uh, i love when i hear them uh ask each other a question and they just go straight to one of the maps or something inside the book that they saw because um it pertained to what they were talking about i really love that so i try to keep as many open books as possible around the um classroom I just try to put out the resources um, for them to be able to stumble upon them and notice that we just talked about it or um, they just read something about it or they just watched something about it, if that makes any sense. Even though their world map is right here and their 50 states map is right here as well, I just think it's nice to have the book opened up for them. And then we can flip through the pages and 
we can talk about what they see. So yeah, I think every few weeks I'll just switch the books between the 50 states and the world maps book. And then we just talk about this stuff. Um, I thought I needed to have like a, a very clear curriculum for studying it, but right now we just want to explore and discover. That's our thing. Um, exploring and discovering, especially since they're little. Um, I would like to be able to say, I would like to be able to say that I would do the same thing if they were a little bit older. Um, I do feel like there's a lot less pressure because they're younger to not stick to an actual course of study or curriculum, but it's exciting to explore. So I think I'll just switch these out every couple of weeks between the 50 states and the um, maps book. So I just did that. I'm just gonna move on to our unit studies. This is our color unit. I'm gonna go down to our bug unit. I'm pretty sure I did a bug unit. Okay, so it looks like I just had dinosaurs in here. So all that means is that I didn't translate it from my Pinterest account over into my Evernote account. So I'll just... So I'll just go over here to Pinterest. Open up my homeschool bugs unit. And then just take a look at the stuff that I've pinned. Take some ideas from here. And figure out what I'm actually going to start with today. I don't need to plan out the whole week. I just need to figure out what I am going to start with tomorrow. Um, a lot of times I like to go through our Pinterest boards with the kids to get them excited about different projects and things that we can start with. I'm learning that it is so much better to have them involved than to try to have everything prepared for them. And because that just caused me so much frustration um, in the beginning. Because you prepare all of these things, you're super pumped about it, and then you start and you're trying to juggle all three kids at the different levels and they may not want to start where you want to start and that doesn't mean that they're not interested. I learned that it didn't mean that they weren't interested. It just meant that they just wanted a little bit more freedom. And so I found that by having them involved, it was just better. It was better than trying to prepare everything and trying to teach from above. It was better to explore with them on the same level. So we're still doing the same things. It's just that I lay out everything and show them all the possibilities um, of ways that we can start to explore. And then we just decide together and it's, it's so much more fun that way. It really is. And I struggle with that. I'm, I'm repeating myself because I do struggle with it because parts of me feels, you know, my brain feels really old school. Like you have to discipline them to follow things a certain way. And I think that that's true, you know, in so many ways, but it doesn't have to be right now. Like they're younger. Um, I think a lot of things will come as they mature and as they get older and as they learn to sit still for longer periods of time and have you know, a longer attention span, then we can do more things that require them to follow very specific instructions and steps and um, curriculum. But for right now, just just really developing that sense of exploration and excitement for learning um, is good. It's really good and it works for us. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take this and leave this open for us to come to in the morning. I'm over on YouTube. So the first thing I do is start off with just putting four kids. Um, and this could be an interesting road to go down. And in the past, I've spent far too long trying to find things this way. Um, but now I just learned to discipline myself to put myself on a time frame. And then it helps me to focus more. So I'll, I'll probably give myself about five, ten minutes. Here's one, ten interesting insects. Ever notice those really tiny animals crawling and flying and buzzing around? They're called insects or bugs. I'll just go and add a new playlist. And then, you know, this is where this section of YouTube comes in handy. So I try to pick informational type videos, but then I also try to pick other fun things that could relate. Um, to our unit books about the insects. So I see one about the very hungry caterpillar. 
um and i'll take a look at that i see one from sideshow kids which is one of our favorites um don't be afraid of spiders so i'll add that to the mix i'm gonna go ahead and do that now So I'm going to add that to the mix. Sideshow Kids has a lot of these. So I'm going to add all of these to the mix because they're all things that they can just eat their little hearts out watching. So I'm going to add this one. And adding them to a playlist is great because if you try to just, I used to just try to play one and then talk about it and it just wasn't, that wasn't the best way. <laughs> because when it stopped playing and you're trying to get them to pay attention then you just frustrate yourself but if you add them to a playlist kids work really really well off of repetition um so just having them watch them over and over again i found was the best way for them to pull out the information what i also like to do while i'm looking for them to just give me some ideas to narrow it down is take a look through the books that i found and as i'm flipping through um i'll see different things like housefly um, Longhorn Beetle, Housefly, so there's different types of beetles, mosquitoes, so that'll give me a better um, example of what to type in while I'm looking. So of course I want to add bees to the mix. I really like to find videos where they actually have children in the videos because the kids, that really captures the kids' attention to see other kids that are really excited about learning um, the same thing. And I have to admit, this is like not my favorite unit to study because bees, bugs, crustaceans, all that jazz is not my favorite. Um, so this should be interesting, you guys. It's really cool when you come across others who have made playlists already that you can just grab a bunch of videos from their playlist. Um, um, and also... I, I forgot to mention this too, my Get Epic app. I'm trying to get better and better at preparing that app for them to um, use more of. Right now they just kind of free for all and I just add a few things to their list to read. But I do want to get do better using it because I think that I can be a lot more intentional about using it. But they do have um, prepared like uh, playlist on there as well that include videos and books separated by subjects so i'll probably look at that as well all right so now that i'm finished with that i'm going to add some things to their ipads and then i think i'm going to be all ready i may find a few printouts yeah some coloring pages and things to keep savannah busy if she gets a little bit um bored <laughs> listening to us learn because sometimes she does that she just has other things she wants to do so i'll probably print out some coloring pages i hope this was helpful if anything just to see that i don't prepare too much i gather together as many resources as possible and i have them ready to set out on the table so that in the morning we can kind of jump in and talk about what we are planning to study and then they can help me kind of uncover some of the questions they had or things they were curious about and then we go from there we will erase our board and we'll start working on our board and then i'll listen to their questions about things they had interest in um and where they would like to start I hope you guys like this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed if you want to see more videos from us. And I will see you in our next video. Bye. And what guys are you guys? Are you unit studiers? Um, what unit are you guys studying right now? If you've done the bug unit, I would love to know some of the things that worked for you and things that we could probably add to our unit. And yeah, anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.